What is going on guys? You're here with Nate. This is Crossfeeds Production and thank you once again for tuning in. Got a secret weapon I want to share with you guys. It's kind of one of the plugins that I go to in 2019 for removing resonant frequencies in my mix. Um, it's very effective in doing that. It's quite a quick process to get to where you want to be as well. Um, so that's why I want to share this plugin with you and kind of give you my uh, take on what this plugin does. So let's get to the screen right now. The plugin I'm talking about is called Soothe. Um, let's go on the screen, have a look at this and check it out right now. This is the plugin interface. This is what you'll see when you first open it up. Actually, you may not see that. You'll probably see something more like that um, it does have presets automatically switched into this plugin which you can see on the screen here here are some of the presets that are available you can create your own as well um, that allows you to save some pretty handy presets if you're working on it uh, for example so let's go to this uh, track that i'm currently working on and let's go to the vocal rescue preset and i just want to load that up because i feel like this is probably a good starting point for anybody who doesn't know how to use this plugin to start with uh, I'll go over some of the parameters first on this plugin so you understand exactly what it does, how it works, and uh, kind of get the idea of what it's doing here. So first off, this depth dial here, which you can see, this is the main dial, which you could call a threshold for this plugin. It allows you to adjust um, in depth, basically, where the plugin starts to react to the frequencies. So for example, if I was just to turn this vocal on, I'll just hit play and show you what I'm talking about. Bring in everything. Take me to your throne. Take me to your throne, yeah. Okay, excellent. So you guys can kind of see what's happening. It just barely touched the actual vocal there because I had the threshold so low on that. So if I just increase the threshold, show you kind of what it can do. Um, this is exactly what I would do on this vocal, but I'll show you and then I'll set it up to show you how I use it on this vocal to effectively remove some of the resonant frequencies out of that. Bring in everything, take me to your throne, take me to your throne, yeah. Now you can see when the actual vocal is playing, these are pretty much, just think of it like a, a four band EQ or a five band EQ. You've, you've got your, your bands here, so these are all movable. You can adjust them how you want um, to affect the resonance. Um, by pulling this up, it's actually going to affect the resonance in this particular band more than um, if it was down. So basically pulling it down is reducing the amount it affects in that band and then up is increasing the amount that it affects in that band. So just think of it like that. So when you're working on it, if you want to get, for example, like a DSing kind of effect, you've got something that's happening around about the 4K or 5K or 8K you don't like, uh, you in increase that and that will remove more of those resonant frequencies out of the particular sound that's going through it. So if I was fiddling with this plugin, I would typically just play the vocal. Bring in everything, take me to your throne, take me to your throne, yeah. Now you can see when this vocal, because this vocal is a male vocal, it has a lot of low end frequencies that you may not want to remove some of the resonance out of that because that's not where the resonance are going to sound bad to me, at least anyway. I would tend to think that the resonance are going to be more at the 8K where the, the real S's or even below that somewhere in the 4 to 5K, the S's and sort of that sibilance is there, um, just like you can hear in the vocal. And then you tend to remove that. You don't have to be too brash with it because you don't want to use it where it sounds like it's actually there. You want to use it so it sounds natural. And that's with every plugin, to be honest, uh, even EQ compression or anything like that. Um, you want to make it sound as natural as possible, but at least fit into the mix so it works with the mix. So if I was playing this in the entire mix, uh, we'll just quickly play this part of the track so you can hear it. Bring in everything. Take me to your throne. Take me to your throne. Now I'll turn the plugin on and off, um, and then I'll go to Delta mode, which shows you what the plugin is actually doing as well. Let's turn the plugin off. Bring in everything. Take me to your throne. Take me to your throne. Yeah. Now you can kind of hear how it allows the vocal to be more controlled than by the compressor um, in this mix. Now I've got basically Soothe coming first as my controlling isolation of those harmonics that I don't want in there. And then I've got an EQ to either add or reduce some of the stuff within that, that vocal there. And then I've got a compressor, which is pretty much upwards compression and downwards compression as well combined. And then in further to that, I've got an Arvox, which is just giving me some typical compression that Arvox does. 
So this is kind of the vocal chain that I've used on this one particular vocal. And this plugin has allowed me to just isolate those resonant frequencies that I don't like, and I don't want them to be compressed later on um, out of the mix first. Now you could do this after, but it tends to be that the compressor will react to the resonant frequencies or frequencies that are pick poking out the most in the mix. So that's kind of what I like this plugin about. It definitely helps using it in the mix in different ways. Even on a master bus, you could definitely use this uh, to effectively help your, your mix or your master as well. Um, let me just quickly show you isolating the, the uh, Delta so you can see what it's actually doing there. But those are the frequencies, the resonance that are being removed out of this plugin. Um, the frequencies here can be controlled, so the sharpness, I tend to go for about 4.8 or 5 because it's not too sharp, not too narrow, um, but it really depends on what you're working on to get the right thing there. Um, if you want to work on it however you work, it's up to you, um, but the selectiveness is just controlling uh, this amount here, so you can see where it's selecting the, the resonance and then the sharpness, if I just go down here, that makes it wider and then really narrow, so it's really just picking up some of the resonance there. Um, typically, you probably don't want to do too much because it'll sound a bit unnatural and harsh. Uh, so I tend to go for about 4.8 and uh, depending on what sounds right, I'll work there. It also has a resolution so you can up sample, sorry, I should say over sample here, so two to four times. And then the resolution is ultra high or high or normal. I just stick with normal because it works fine. Um, if you can do it, go with higher resolution. It does give you a bit better sound depending on what you want. Uh, you can mix wet and dry, so that's parallel. Uh, you can actually trim in what's going on here with the plugin and bypass as well. And these are the bandwidths for each of these bands of, I guess you could call EQ curves there. So uh, it's a very interesting plugin. It's definitely worth checking out if you can download your own demo to check it out. Try it out on your mix. See what you think. The guys at um, Oak Sound uh, gave me the option to try this out as well, just so I could review it and show you guys personally what I think about it as well. So thanks to them. And also thank you for you guys for tuning in for this video. Thanks for everything you do for this channel. And I also appreciate all the likes, subscribes and everything else. Um, so if you like this, hit a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.